Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video with me, Nikki, where we are sewing things for our friends and family. I walk you through real-time tutorials so you see step-by-step -step how to create the products. Um, so if you haven't subscribed, if this is your first time finding me on, on the tube, click the link below, subscribe. Um, this way you'll know when I upload new tutorials. All right, um, so for today, what we are going to do is we're going to make something um, that is very versatile. Um, I believe in making things that you can use for more than one um, purpose, because otherwise what good would that be, right? So um, today, what we are going to do is we are going to make this, um, what I like to call book organizer or book cover, but um, it can be used for a variety of different things, okay? So um, you have the outside of it, obviously it ties, and then when you open it, um, it has a slot here, you know, for a book or something, and then, you have um you can use these slots to put pencils um you could even use it for um you know organizing art supplies for brushes you can use this for crocheting needles um to store your needles in um a variety of different things even mascara makeup brushes you just have to make it a little small a little shorter um, so we'll get into that as we're sewing with the alterations, um, that you can make with, you know, for changes. Um, yeah, so let's get started. You're going to need several items today. Um, grab the pins. You're going to need, um, grab a chopstick. You know, I love chopsticks. Um, you need an iron. You're going to need, um, three pieces of fabric. I'll put the links down below so you can get the measurements. Okay, so you're going to need an outer and two inners, okay, um, which are going to be the lining and create a pocket. You're going to need interface. I'm using two different types. I am using one that's a little thicker than the other. This is the um, Peltex 70. And then I'm using um, a piece of uh, Pelon 809, okay? This Peltex is the same size as the material. And then the Pelon 809 is um, half of the height. You'll see as we get to um, sewing the project. Um, you're going to need two scraps. Um, these are going to create um, the straps for closing. Um, um the strips <laughs> strips of fabric which are going to create the ties okay these are measuring 10 inches you can make them um as long as you want to or as short as you want to whatever is you know whatever you decide um but these are 10 okay and you want to make them um one and a half inches wide or two inches wide okay all right um you're also going to need a ruler during this project okay so let's let's get started okay so the first thing we are going to do we are going to first work on this um, inner portion right here okay we're gonna work on with this solid along with the pocket area okay so you can put um, things to the side that you are not using right now okay all right so I'm I have one inner okay I have um, one inner there and then I actually have another um, this is the same size okay so what you want to do is to create the pocket get your material get one piece I'm looking right now to see which side is my pretty side and which is my wrong side because <laughs> they look so similar to each other with your wrong sides together Okay, what you're going to do is fold over one piece. Okay, you're going to fold over one piece. All right, so that your raw edges on the bottom are touching. Right? The Pelon 809, you're going to iron right now. 
okay? So the Pelon 809, we are going to put inside of this just to create um, a stabilizer, okay? The Pelon 809, one side of it is, um, one side of it has the, um, the sticky glue on it. That's all we need right now. We just, what we wanna do is give this here a little stability on the pocket, okay? So what we wanna do is fold this over, okay? Oh, I gotta move this over. All right. This is such a awesome project. It's um, versatile. You can use it for a number of different things. Um, you know, what I'm gonna do as we talk is I'm gonna iron this as I talk <laughs> um, to secure the um, Pelon 809 in place. Um, what I like about this is that I um, like to create it in different prints because it can be used for um, adults as well as children. Um, and it just depends on what they're going to put into it. Okay, which I think is, you know, pretty cool. Okay, because adults might want to use it for books and pens. Um, children can use it for coloring books and markers. Okay. Okay, I don't I don't need the um, the Pelon 809 on both sides. Like I said, I just want it on one side to give a little bit of body um, to the um, to the pockets. Okay, so now that we have the Pelon in there, what I'm going to do is I am going to top stitch across the top. You want to use coordinating thread. What we're doing is we, we are preparing um, the pocket, okay? So I'm putting a stitch line right across the top. Um, it's just a decorative thing. Um, and it also helps hold the fabric in place. Okay, um, so on 3.0. And I am sewing at my first guide marker. So you can sew at about one eighth of an inch. Okay, so now um, what we're going to do is I'm just cutting off my stragglies because um, these eventually will seep through. <laughs> okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to prepare the pockets. Okay, we're going to prepare this area right here. Okay, um, and so... What we're going to do, I'm gonna move this out the way, okay? I'm going to, wow, well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Cutting stragglies, because yes, these will come through. Okay, I just, <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do first, we're going to find the middle of this Okay, so the middle of 15 is going to be, I'm going to use my, uh, my marker here. Okay, is going to be, um, I'm going to mark at seven and a half. Okay, just until I can mark all the way down. This is the middle. So, or I should say on the fold. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, mark the line. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to, well, pin these two together. Did I, did I go through? No, it didn't go through. <laughs> uh, la, la, la. Okay. I'm going to pin this side. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start at the pocket line, okay, right at the pocket line, and I'm going to sew down my marked line, okay, to create the fold. 
I'm starting a little bit down because when I when it back stitches, I don't want it to go onto um, the top part of the fabric. I want it to stay on the pocket. And so I'm going to um, do the back stitching myself right there so that I don't go off of the pocket. And you want to make sure that you're back stitching because you don't want the threads to come off, come out the top when you do the separated portions. The marker is really nice because it helps you to um, be able to mark your line without actually having to use the um, without having to use um, a soluble marker. Soluble, soluble marker, the wipeable marker. Um, sorry guys, this, for some reason, this cotton has a lot of, rah, a lot of stragglies. I'm not, ah, oh, that's okay, I'll take care of that. I'm not editing this portion. <laughs> I'm going to take care of that just so that you can see what to do when that happens. That's going to be our seam line. <laughs> so, I'll seam. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is... Um, create the um, spaces for what could be either you know the pencils pens um, um, uh, crochet needles paint brushes whatever you want I'm going to make the spaces at one and a half inches um, when you think about why you're creating this project you go ahead and alter the dimensions for what you need them for okay I'm going to mark one and a half inches and I'm marking hard because um, I have the interface inside of there okay so that's why I'm marking hard all right so here we are Doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm just going to do a few and just so you can see right at the space that I marked at that line, that's why I'm putting my one and a half mark, okay? I'm not marking from the center. I'm marking from the line that I already marked, okay? And I'm gonna move this down. And I know my lines are even because I can see my one and a half mark is right here. I can also see that my, my line here is lined up with that stitch line. So I'm doing good there. <laughs> so I like to mark um, a little bit and then I go back and I make it heavier. I'm gonna do it again. From this portion here, I'm going to go one and a half inches over again. Making sure my lines are all even. Okay. All right. Um, the cool thing about this project is that you can um, make it, you know, for the kids. You can make it for yourself. Um, and I'm going to show you how you can make it. As you can tell, I'm doing the next one. <laughs> um, you can make it for... Um, you can make the ties so that you can fold this. You know, if you want it to fold as a trifold. Okay, so I've marked um, for the rest of the way um, that I'm going to sew, okay? Um, now that I've actually done the middle. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab that, um, I'm going to grab the interface, okay? And I'm going to attach it. This interface is such a nice, um, it's a good thickness that um, you want to make sure that you attach um, the interface to the lining so that it's not floating around. Uh, we talked about that in another video. You know, you want to make sure it's not floating around. Um, oh, in the quilting video, that's where we talked about it. But you want to make sure it's not floating around inside of your product. Okay. And to do that, we are um, going to um, attach it for these lines here. Okay. All right. So I'm going under. Um, I'm going underneath the machine. I'm going to bump my machine. Uh, so my machine is at um, 3.0. 
um, because I just put this here, this 70 is a little thick, I moved my machine up to 3.5. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put my stitch distance at 0.5. Okay? And sliding that under there. And once again, oh, hold on. This looks a little crooked. Um, okay. Okay. That's just, okay. All right. So once again, I'm going to move it down so that it doesn't start right at the very top. Okay. I want to be able to stop my back stitch. Now, almost similar to quilting, um, the machine, the, the foot is gliding over the fabric because I bumped up my, um, I bumped up my stitch link and I bumped up the tension. So, I mean, the stitch distance. This way, it's not fighting with the machine. Okay, I'll cut the straggly when we're done. Okay, I'm going back under. I'm just going to do all of these right now. What I love about the marking tool is that when you mark hard with your, with your tool, it keeps that line there, you know, so you don't have to go back, you know, mark and then go back, you know, back and forth, back and forth. I'm going to remove this pin here just because I'm getting to the end and I don't, I don't need it. Okay. Um, the top of your pockets is a stress point. So um, just making sure that you put those extra stitches will be a big difference. And like I said, if you wanna make your pockets larger, by all means, you can. Yeah, let me lift my needle a tad bit more. Okay. Okay. I mentioned in the quilting video that sometimes things shift. <laughs> um, this is an exact the one where I was showing how to um, how to quilt. This is an exact example of that. You see um, where the material shifts, um, you know, which is fine because those that's the seam area. Okay, I'm removing the pins that held this in place. Okay, um, this portion here, if you find that you don't want to use it for a book, Go ahead, continue measuring the same distance, whatever distance you chose to do your pockets. Go ahead and, you know, continue that as far over as you want to, okay? This would also be the time that if you wanted to put a little pocket for some reason, um, if you wanted to store something, you know, um, at the top of the project, like here, like if, you know, uh, maybe on this side, actually, if you were going to make it longer, you could actually go ahead now and put the pocket on, make whatever changes you wanted to make or additions that you wanted to make. Okay. I'm not putting a pocket or anything, but that's just so that you know that that is possible. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to. All right. So what we're going to do now, um, we are going to um, put the fabric face um, pretty side, <laughs> pretty side, uh, face down. Okay. So pretty side and pretty side are facing each other. All right. Just put that to the side for just a moment. Grab the scraps, the, um, the pieces for the straps for the ties that you have that are the, um, the 10 inches long. And, um, we're going to be using that. Okay. That, what is my bobbin? Okay. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create um, create the uh, tab. And obviously, if you have seen my other videos, I told you 
that you know we'll be doing a lot of these you know for um you know for many projects so once you learn how to do the tabs i mean that's pretty much like i said this is like key making keychains this is like making lanyards um you know a lot of different things the hooks for coin purses um if you want to put the tabs on zipper pouches etc etc you know cosmetic bags okay so all i'm doing is folding in those raw edges okay folding in those raw edges and lining them up to make some pretty seams okay at one side of it what we're going to do at one side i'm going to fold this down okay cut off a straggly <laughs> I'm going to fold this over and close it. This pretty side where we don't see a raw edge is going to be the edge of the tie. Okay, the pretty side. Okay, so let's flatten that out. Hold on, I gotta uh, put that inside. Okay. <laughs> And you can fix it as you sew. Um, the raw side is what we're going to put inside of the project. Okay. All right. Go ahead and grab that other side. Fold those ends over so that you can um, put those wrong sides together so that you can get that crease in the middle. Okay. And bring them just like the other one to meet in the middle. You can decide how thick you want your ties. I have found that um, I've made them where I've cut the tabs two inches wide for this. Um, I mean, where I've cut them three inches wide, but then I realized I like the final tabs thinner. So um, that's why I cut them this here at two inches wide. So, and again, that's something that once you realize um, how thick you like something, how wide you want it, you can alter it. I'm going to fold this portion down right now. Um, just so that when we get down there, it's already a clean end. Okay, all right. Fold this in. So this would be a nice um, travel accessory um, for you to make to match your zipper pouch if you um, if you you know use makeup or you know even if you like to um, even if you like to crochet but you can make this in the same fabric that you make your zipper pouch in if you want to use it for traveling instead of putting your mascara um, not your mascara your um, makeup brushes in a bag with your zipper pouches you can um you can have them in there closed so that all the foundation doesn't get over everything okay um what i'm going to do i am going to switch out the color of my thread and bobbin right now because red was inside of the um was for the inside lining but these, um, I'm going to be using white um, because of my uh, fabric, and I want it all to match. <laughs> so um, because these straps are a part of the outside, um, I just want to make sure that I do the straps the same color um, as the as what's going to be on the outside. Okay. And no, I do not like to use my automatic threader because I'm harsh on my levers. Okay, um, so go ahead and um, go ahead and um, close up those tabs. You're going to sew along um, your uh, raw edges on both sides so that you have a nice, pretty, um, close stitching to the ends okay 
I'm starting at the raw edge. I'm just going to put that back down to 3.0. Start at the raw edge and on the open um, on the open portion so that I close up that edge first. I can see a small portion of that um, of the inside sticking out so I'm just using my little snippers to push it back inside says I'm always leaving pins ah that almost fell <sighs> okay so what we're going to do right now is we are going to position our oh, let me put these other pins away <laughs> we're going to no I might need them we're going to position our our um tabs you know our uh ties to go inside um, so that we can sew this up. So what we want to do is put the pretty, lift up that um, outer fabric, put the pretty end of the tie right inside, put it right on top of the pocket. I'm going to leave out a small portion right on the end, okay, so that um, that raw edge is what's going to get sewn in there, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do it on both sides. But I want to tell you something really quickly. If your um, closer to close like this for the purpose of a book and, um, you know, for the purpose of a book carrier with pencils, you put both of the straps inside on the different sides. So one goes on this side and the other, that's the other raw, um, the raw edge that will go on this side. Okay, directly on top of the pocket. They should overlap right there. Just leave a little bit out on each side. Okay, that's if you want it like this to open, you know, um, a strap on each side. If you want it so that your pocket can actually do, make pretend this is not here for a moment. If you want it where, if you're going to use it for, um, you know, like I said, um, uh, crocheting needles or you know makeup um makeup brushes and if you want it to be a fold like you know either a tri-fold or four-fold whatever you would like you know to fold it evenly if you want to use it for that purpose okay what you're going to do see how this is right here on the end okay one would wrap that way and what you would do is you will put both of the ties on both sides, um, put them on both sides so that they are together, okay? Because what will happen is one will go around that way and the other one that will be inside with that will wrap around the opposite direction and then you can tie it. If that's the case, 
make sure that your um, your straps that you're doing, make sure they're a little bit longer. Give them about three more inches, you know. So um, instead of, you know, doing, you know, um, 10 inches, you know, give them about, yeah, instead of doing them 10 inches, give them about, you know, um, 12 or 13 inches, okay? Um, and that's going to allow you to um, go ahead and wrap it around and tie, okay? What I am going to do, I don't want both of these that way, okay? So what I'm going to do for this particular project is I'm going to put it exactly how you see it in my, in my example right there. I'm putting, um, you know, the straps one on each side, okay? I'm going to um, line this up so that I can pin it together, okay? All right. Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty cool that um, you can actually, you know, use it. Um, I've done both ways. Um, that's how I know to tell you. <laughs> okay. Um, we're just about, well, not just about, but meaning we just have to close this up, you know, and give it a nice iron. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pin this side now. Okay. Pinning this. All right. Oh, that didn't come. <laughs> that didn't come. Okay. <laughs> All right. So go ahead and you. what you're going to do is you're going to sew all the way around um you know what let's start here on the bottom so start here on the bottom don't worry about my thing here because it shifted i was going to take care of that but just for the purpose for you okay so start here at the bottom um i'll put a pin here so you can see it um ouch <laughs> start at the bottom and you're going to sew from here all the way around all the way around the rectangle okay and you're going to stop when you get, um, you know, leave about four fingers, okay? Because that's how you're going to turn it right side out, okay? All right, now because you have multiple layers here, what you're going to do is bump up that, um, bump up your machine to put it at 3.5, okay? And go at about a quarter of an inch. I'm also going to move up my stitch distance to 1.0. Yep, good. Okay. Rotating. I'm going to remove this pin just because it's in my way. So when you pin, if you want to, you can pin it further, you know, inside a little more. I'm going over the tie, so I'm going to backspace. I mean, not backspace, ha ha. Not editing that, guys. Backstitch. <laughs> okay, I'm getting to the end. And I'm going to backstitch, all right. What I'm doing is I'm just holding it a little bit because the um, Insubrite is a little thick, but, um, you know, because it's going to give it that stability. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm helping it out so that, um, so that it stays straight and it doesn't affect my fabric. Um, curling, not curling, but bunching up. All right, All right back to the chain. Okay. I'm just smoothing it out. Because again, it's like with quilting, it's shifting. <laughs> okay, I'm going over that um, extra tie. And 
that opening there is going to um, be closed when we flip and top stitch. Okay, let me just check. Okay, because, um, okay, so, all right, clip off those corners, clip off those corners, and now we're going to clip off the ties. All right. Now, what I like to say when you go to flip this, iron it to make it a little softer. Okay. All right. If you iron it, um, if you iron it to make it a little softer, right, it will make it a little bit easier to turn. Okay. And I like to do it as soon as my interface is while the interface is hot. All right. Push it all. Oh, you know what? Let's grab it from the furthest corner. If you have light fabric, make sure that you cut those stragglies because you'll see it you'll see it through the video. You'll see it um through the fabric. Ah, why can't I grab? <sighs> okay. Um so the pins are still inside. Um I think there's like two pins. So just be careful when you're turning it right side out. Okay. Okay. I'm telling you, I was a whole lot faster. Ouch! There goes the pin. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go. I'm going to take these out. Okay, so like I said, those pins are still in there. <laughs> okay. Raw. All right, there we go. Grab a chopstick. If you cut the corners, um, you won't have a lot of bulk. Okay, be careful when you are poking through that you do not poke through your pretty stitching. Okay, so that you don't create holes. I see a straggly, oh no it wasn't, okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do this corner we only have to iron this and top stitch it guys. Mm. All right, so you see that it's going to want to curl. That's okay. It's fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> Cuz right now, look we're going to flatten it out. We're going to give it that heat to flatten out. We want that thickness um, because that's what's going to make it sturdy. Once we top stitch all around, it's going to help it out. Okay, so just it's going to take a little, take a minute or so you know for you to apply you know the heat and the pressure to it and it's getting beautiful we got to close up that bottom but closing up that bottom is done when we top stitch i'm just putting um a little extra heat here because it just helps um soften and flatten the interface. I used a thicker interface for a reason, um, as you can tell by the handprints, that this is purposely um, going, it's going to be for a child. Um, so I needed a harder interface, but if you're going to use it for, um, you know, makeup or something like that, Go ahead and use a thinner interface, like you know, the Pell. You can use the Pella on 809 on both the inner and the outer layers, um, or you can use fusible fleece if you um, decide that you want it to, you know, to fold under 
um, to fold around. Um, okay, um, so we're gonna fold up the ends here, the closure areas. So um, fold them in. They should automatically um, fold right in with each other um, at the bottom. Um, so go ahead and just, you know, give a little bit of pressure there. And now we're going to do the final step of this. Um, well, one of the last ones. Um, we're going to top stitch um, around this entire thing. Um, what we want to do is um, help out the seams that are inside and, you know, so that it's not so um, bulky. So we're going to um, start off, I'm going to sew from the opposite side, but we're gonna go all the way around the entire thing, um, even over the straps, all the way around, closing up the bottom portion and um, continuing right back to the start. Okay, so let's do that. Just trying to clean up my area. Um, <laughs> Okay, and I am sewing on 3.5, but if you used a um, thinner interface, you can, you know, um, stay on 3.0. All right, um, I'm going to backstitch. I'm gonna start here, and I'm gonna start in the corner a little bit, okay? Sometimes I would start at the, at the, um, at the actual hole. But when we stop, I want to put the um, the last stitch in the corner. People don't pay attention um, to the corner stitchings as much. Okay, and so you see I'm going um, an eighth of an inch, you know, from the end. And that's what you want to do. You want to stay close to the end um, so that you're basically just putting a little tiny border around the end okay and I'm just helping out the area here where um, I'm at the closure um, I'm just helping out the area on um, the bottom making sure that the bottom stays um, folded in okay nice my fabric is lined up with um, with that first guide marker so that it's at, you know, the eighth of an inch. And I'm actually just pushing this through, pushing it along as it sews. stitch further okay <laughs> okay make sure your um your stitch is facing out because mine was just under and I would have actually sewed over it okay so you don't want that to happen <laughs> Like I said, what this is doing is this is helping the seam allowance that's underneath here. It's just helping it to stay down. So, which is why you want to top stitch everything. I'm going to snip my ends real quick. Um, just so that when it comes back around, um, I don't have too much of, um, too much thread here. Okay. And I'm gonna backstitch. Now, my inside is red. If you 
want it, if you use a solid inside um, that has a, you know, um, where your outside has a pattern, what you can do is make your bobbin the color of the fabric that's inside. Okay, you can actually um, leave your spool to be the color that's on the um, outside. So um, the spool for the top, leave that to be the color that's, you know, coordinating with your outside and for the inside, I like that it gives it a little bit of, um, I don't know, it just, it just breaks it up from the red. But you decide if you want to change the color um, then you can change the color of the bobbin. Okay. So now, um, we're actually done here. I just put a, um, I just put a final, um, iron over this. Okay. I know my middle obviously is right there. And look, when I go like that, my ends meet up. Okay. So what I'm going to do, because this particular one is not going to be, um, folded, it's not going to be the way that I so showed you that you have an option. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, put a stitch down the middle of this. I'm going to do that later, though, because like I said, um, oh, you know what? I can do that because I was going to change the color of my thread. But um, so that's the inside. Oh, but you know what? Yeah, I'll do it later. I'll, I'm going to change my I'll do it now. <laughs> um, let me just put my bobbin. Um, because there's already red stitching on the pocket, I don't want to put white right next to it or on top of it. And so, um, I'm going to use red on the bottom and then I'm going to use white on the top. Okay. Which is what I was just talking to you about. Okay. So let's do that now. Here's my iron line. Okay. Let's see. Hold on. <laughs> Is that it? Let's see. I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna give it a tad bit of a press more, so just so that I can get a more defined, um, a more defined line for me. Okay. It's there. Okay. Here we go. So, all right. White is on the top. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Back stitching. It's almost like when you have a book, a spine of a book. This is going to help the book. You don't have to do this part. I'm choosing to do this part. <laughs> okay, and I'm back stitching. Okay, and that is actually going to be the end of this project, okay? So I have put um, a stitch down there. All right, and here's where um, I mentioned, I was talking to you about the, about the ties, okay? So... If you want to use it as a fold up, okay, two things you are going to do. I'm just cutting this little snip right here. If you want to use it as a fold up, two things. One, you can use a softer interface, okay, um, like this one here. Um, because this one here is ob obviously more uh, flexible. So as you can see like this. Right. So if you want it to roll, you're going to use a softer interface and you're going to put both ties on the same side. OK, if you don't want it to fold and depending on what you're going to use it for, go ahead and, you know, use either the fusible fleece or you can use, you know, um, a, um, a thicker interface. Um, I'm going to oh, I can use these. <laughs> and so. And that's pretty much it, um, you know, and that's how, that's how it goes. Adapt, you know, change the pockets to how you want to. And, um, you know, that's all. <laughs>
<laughs> so um i'll see you back for the next project okay if you have questions put them down below and um you know as always i will get back to you otherwise check those links that are below join me in our in the facebook group um sewing made easy with nikki um you know um follow me on social media okay and subscribe and come back for another video all right so bye that's all